So we're talking about teams. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the phrase, teamwork makes the dream work. And what we know is uh, that is not always true. So what we're gonna talk about today a little bit is when can we make that true? And it's really about getting the right people together, understanding your own and other people's instinctive strengths, and then just making sure that people are in an environment where they can use their natural talents to the best of their ability and contribute that to the organization. And uh, Eric and I are your facilitators today. So this is Eric Carrera and I'm Amy Bruski. And we're excited to talk to you about this because we live this every day in our own organization. So as leaders, as team members on different teams. Um, so we're here to be a part of the solutions because what I know is the people part of the business is what keeps me up at night. So I'm sure that's true for you. Our goal is to give you some insights and some potential solutions that you can start applying right away. Um, so let's talk about what's going on out there in the environment right now. Today's environment is making it even tougher. And it's these people problems that are now at the level where um, it's more challenging than ever to figure out how to do more with less. So we know that we're going through what, what's being called the great resignation, or some people have called it the great reassessment, which I think is actually an even better term. We have people figuring out, is this really how I wanna work, where I wanna work, what I wanna do. Um, we know that there are um, the highest resignations ever on record. We know that a lot of people are um, retiring and not necessarily coming back and at least reassessing what they're gonna do. Hiring has become a huge challenge. I'm sure that's true for many of you. That is what we're certainly seeing here um, in the Phoenix market, Phoenix, Arizona, but I'm hearing that from our clients all over the US, if not all over the world. Um, and then these market disruptions that have been happening, whether that is um, shortages on, on commodities and products, or it is just tougher to get things done in our current climate, um, whether inflation is an issue for you, whatever it is. And then hybrid and remote work is a very unique challenge is that how do you get a team to collaborate effectively when we are either working all remotely or where you're in this hybrid environment for the first time. So all of these environmental factors kind of come together for this perfect storm, um, I call it, to make the people problems even that much more challenging. So what's happened to a lot of our clients is we've got this um, increased workload. So you're having to do more with fewer resources and each individual is really feeling that effect of that stress because of the fact that you are short staffed. It is um, an interesting challenge. And unfortunately, as a result of that, employees are getting burned out because you've got the people who are still around who are taking on more with an added level of stress and more complexity than we've ever had to deal with. So there's this real burnout and just figuring out who should be doing what um, becomes a challenge. So what we're seeing with our clients, and certainly we've seen this, we've experienced this too, is a real morale and retention issues that weren't there before. So what I wanna share with you is that Colby Corp, we are on a mission. We are all about helping you solve the toughest people problems. So our mission is to help an individual or teams understand their instinctive strengths and then put that into play in whatever way matters to you most. So whether that's in your business or in your personal life, um, that is what we're passionate about. And we have really figured out a way to do that in a much more comprehensive way than ever before. And the way that we put that together is what we call the Colby system. The Colby system is, I feel, what really sets us apart from other assessments out there. There are lots of good tests that help you understand some strengths along the way. But the Colby system is where we've put together a more comprehensive model for all of the people decisions that you have in order to help people find joy in their work and teams that work together all the time. So I'm gonna briefly go through these, these four steps. It starts with identifying strengths. So of course, this is the basis of figuring out, you know, what are your unique ways of solving problems that are true for you? And we all have these natural abilities to take action in a certain way. So we start with identifying the strengths that you have on board in your team. But then we take that and we go a step further and we optimize collaboration. So we figure out how to strategically combine the strengths that you have on board 
and actually help you decide when should you be working together and when should you be working independently. So we're gonna kind of maximize teamwork and these collaborative efforts. And this is one of the parts of the Fulby system where we've developed these new team reports that we're really excited to share with you today. And then of course, once you're optimizing team talents, we need to make sure that we align each person's individual strengths into the roles and what they, they need to get done. People are having challenges with retaining people in turnover. The number one way you fix that problem is making sure that people are in jobs that they love. That means we need to tap into what those strengths are and really assess how well is each person able to use that and what level of stress do they have in their job when they're using their talents. And then lastly, expanding. Expand is about when you are able to add to your team, figuring out what needs do you have for problem solving strengths. So we put all of this together in the Colby system. All of this is a comprehensive model. We want to get a sense before we go further on where are some of you, what's your level of experience with Colby so far? So go ahead, we're going to launch a poll and answer, have you completed your own A or have you gone further and you've included A's for everyone, so your team members? Have you done even more and you've actually run some reports, you've attended some of our events, um, or are you just starting? You're just a beginner. So we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure we've got enough of you answering this. And then um, I will have our, our friend Heather, who's supporting us today in Colby training, will be sharing that. All right, I'm gonna give you just a couple more seconds. All right, Heather, go ahead and share the results of who we have so far. All right, so it looks like a lot of you have done even more, which is so exciting. Um, so some of you are beginners, but uh, so at least a quarter of you have at least done your A or gotten other team members to do it. So that's excellent. You've experienced some pieces of the Colby system. So let's go a little bit more in depth on each of the steps. All right, Eric, take it away. So yes, thank you, Amy. And yes, I'm going to talk you through identify because that really is step one. It's the part where we need to begin and understand, okay, if we're going to build a really productive team, we need to identify what talents do we already have? Or, you know, if you're going to soup up your car. You need to figure out, all right, what kind of engine do I already have? All of those things. So identify the amazing talents you already have uh, within your company, within your business. And it turns out that all of us have lots of different strengths. And this probably isn't new information. You know that you're good at lots of different things. Well, there's this concept that actually goes back to ancient Greece. And I wish at Colby we were smart enough to figure this stuff out, but they beat us by a few thousand years. And it's, if you want to think of it as three parts of the mind, that's great. If you want to think of it as three buckets of strengths, that works too. And I personally have worked with well over a thousand teams. And at Colby, we've worked with tens of thousands of teams. And what we found is that most people, they really understand these first two parts of the mind. So part number one is the stuff that's locked inside of your head. It's things like your natural intelligence, the skills that you've acquired over time. Right? The experience that you've gained as you've you know, gone through educational experience and been out in the workforce and some learned behavior comes in there as well. The second component is more of the heart piece, right? It's the affective part. Things like what motivates you, right? What gets you up in the morning, gets you excited? What values do you have as an individual and what values do you share inside of your organization? And personality lives there as well. So things like you know, are you more of an extroverted person or are you more of an introverted person? And as I mentioned, most people know these two parts of themselves. On the cognitive side, you know the stuff that you know, and you've probably done some sort of cognitive assessment, whether you recognize it or not. Could be something as formal as an IQ test or something as simple as a typing skills test. On the affective side, we've all probably done some kind of personality assessment, something like DISC, Myers-Briggs, Predictive Index, Colors, or even something that's a little bit more fun, like, hey, what Disney princess character are you on Facebook, right? All of those are measuring something about your personality. Well, there's this third part, and that's the part that we really look at at Colby, and as we think about, okay, in the workplace, and we need to get stuff done, it's the most critical component because it's looking at specifically how do you get things done? And what I can tell you is that I get things done in a different way than Amy does. 
And Amy mentioned that we have Heather supporting us on the on the uh, webinar here. She makes sure that everything works well, and you know we look terrific when we're on camera and all of that stuff. She has very very different strengths than both Amy and myself. That's fantastic because if we know what each of our talents are, now we can start to set people up for success as we're building those really high performing teams. And you know when Amy launched the poll earlier, we kind of asked, "Where are you on your Colby journey?" And I know there's a few of you that are just like. Hey, I don't know. I heard about Colby. I heard it's fantastic. I want to learn more. Um, if that's you and that's the case, we definitely have a webinar for you. It's called Activate Your A. And I think Suzanne on our team is going to put the link in the chat. But just in case, I'm going to give you a quick reminder of, okay, Colby is measuring my natural strengths. It's measuring how I do stuff. But what the heck do those four colorful bars and those numbers mean? So what we found in our research is that all of us, every person on this webinar, every person in the world solves problems in four ways. That's those four colorful bars. So the first one, the red one called Fact Finder, it's all about gathering information. All of us need some kind of info to get things done. The blue one, follow through, is all about building and designing systems. Some of us need to build them. Some of us need to adapt and change them. Quick start, the green one, it's all about dealing with risk and uncertainty. And that last one, the yellow one called implementer, is the physical world around us, right? You see this sign behind me, the clicker in my hand. We all have to interact with our physical world. That's what ye the yellow one implementer is talking about. So those of you that have done your Colby A, you know that you went through, you answered those 36 questions. And at the end, you got a result that looks something like this. I'm obviously sharing my result here with you, but you got those four colorful bars again, right? The ways that we all problem solve, but then you see those four numbers. Here's the great part about Colby. It's a hundred percent strengths based. So as you're looking at those numbers, it's not that a 10 is better than a one or a one is better than a 10. We're just trying to figure out for you, where do you fall on that continuum? Because if you're a five, three, nine, two, like me, that's perfect. If you're an 8822, that's perfect as well. It's perfect for you. All of the ways that we get things done, that's the, what's the ideal. Those are our strengths. And so for those of you that already know this about yourself, fantastic. But the first part of, real, of that formula as you start to build those really high performing teams is you need to understand this information for those around you. Right. And this could be other employees inside of your business. It could be your business partner. You know, we're coming into the holidays and so there are going to be Christmas parties. You're going to have family over for the holiday, those kinds of things. Even those people, right, as you're working together, setting the table, putting the meal together, you're working as a team. It will make you work that much more effectively if you understand how everybody gets things done. So I talked about that formula for really building, you know, high performing teams. And there are some teams where, you know, you put them together for a couple of days, you put them together for a quick project and they're gonna work really, really well. They're gonna get you those high quality results. But in business, generally we're playing the long game. We're trying to figure out how do we make our company more successful in one, three, five, 10 years. We need to figure out how do we create sustainable success. And it turns out, you know, through our decades of research and working with different teams, there actually is a formula for creating sustainable success within these teams. Part one of this formula is we need to optimize that team. And that's all about collaboration, right? When Amy and I are working together on something, I need to understand, right, how do I relay messages to her so that she understands it, she gets it, she understands what I'm asking for. And vice versa, when she comes to me and says, hey, Eric, I need you to do this, she needs to relay it in a way that it makes sense in my mind that I go, ah, oh, okay, I get what you're trying to do. Yes, now let me go out and do those things. And then as you start to you know, have additional members of the team, three, five, seven, whatever it is, we all have to start to navigate that, right? Because we all do things in different ways. And so I need to understand when I go talk to Bill, when I go talk to Suzanne or Toby or whoever, right? How do I figure out how to make all of us work together in the most effective way possible? So that's the first part of the formula. The next part 
is we then we need to align the strengths. We need to figure out that, hey, my talents mean that it's predicted. I'm going to be really, really good at this stuff. And Amy's talents predict she's going to be really, really good at other stuff and Heather and whoever else. And so if we can assign tasks or roles or jobs to people where they can just be them and they're naturally going to do a really great job at that stuff, now we're aligning the talents with who we have on the team with the job. But we're talking not just about individuals, we're talking about teams working together. You know, Amy mentioned that your four numbers are your MO, right? Your modus operandi. Well, teams have an MO as well. And so based on that combination of factors, you can figure out what's that right mix. And there isn't one right mix for all teams. Because again, as you know, teams have to do different things. I can tell you that the strengths needed for an IT team are very different than the strengths needed for a sales team. That's different than an accounting team. And we all kind of know that naturally, but you need to really start to think about that as you're putting these teams together. And, you know, with the, you know, kind of shortage of workers through the great resignation or just the fact that there's more that needs to get done, if you can do this, you can start to create that two plus two equals five kind of effect. If we're optimizing our collaboration, if we're aligning everyone for their roles, we can do that and we can start to add even more to the team. But I know many of you have even bigger goals, right? You have exponential growth in your mind where we want to grow 2x, 5x, 10x. Well, that's where the multiplication part starts to come in. And instinct-powered leadership is how you begin to multiply. And you can 10x, not just grow by 2, 5, 7% every year. You can grow by 50%, 100%. And so it's all about leaning in and understanding the instincts for yourself as a leader. All right, how am I going to do stuff as a leader? And then understanding for my team, what are their natural talents? What are their instincts? So if you mix all of these components together, that's what gives you the formula for sustainable team success. All right, so we talked about the formula. Now let's jump into each one of the components. What do they actually look like or what's entailed in that? So again, part one is optimized, right? How do we get everybody working together effectively? We've all been on numerous teams in our lives, whether we knew it or not. Right? Your family unit was a team when you were growing up. Your family unit is a team now. At work, you're on teams. If you're on a softball team, that's a team. Right? All of those different factors are individuals working together towards a common goal. Well, we've probably all been on teams where we're crushing it and we're doing a really great job and we're hitting our goals and we're exceeding our goals, we're hitting deadlines, those kinds of things. And we've probably been on teams where we're racking up a lot of losses, right? We don't work together effectively. There's not a lot of trust. We're missing our goals and objectives. Obviously, we all want to be on those winning teams, those teams that are getting it done and exceeding expectation. These are some of the things that, whether you recognize it or not, we're going on on those winning teams, right? You were making better decisions even more quickly. You were able to trust each other. And I knew that if I say, hey, Amy, can you go do this? She's going to knock it out of the park and she's going to do a really great job. And same thing, when she gives something to me, Eric, you got this, go handle it. I'm going to take care of it. Those are all components of or what a, an optimized team really looks like. So how do you go about building that in a repeatable way? It's a couple of pieces. First, you need to start with the people component, right? No one can do it all by themselves. So we need to figure out who is your who, right? Who else do I need to bring into my universe to build this really high performing team? Then also timing comes into a play, right? When do we need to collaborate? Do we need to collaborate all of the time because we need all of us working together? Is it more of a hybrid model where sometimes we work together, sometimes we don't, kind of like a senior leadership team? Or are there times where we don't really collaborate very often? Think of a sales team, right? Sales team, they go out, they work on their own, they work with their clients. Every now and then they share some best practices and that kind of thing, but mostly on their own. It doesn't really matter how often you communicate or you collaborate. What matters is that everyone on the team agrees, this is when we collaborate. This is how often we're going to do it. And then lastly, you need to dig into, all right, how are we going to communicate? How are we going to relay messages in a way that work with others. If we're doing all of those things, 
and we're kind of bringing those piece, pieces together as leaders, now we're starting to build really optimized teams. And as a leader, I see part of my job is I need to get all of the junk out of the way that slows my people down. They're all great at certain things. And so if I can get some of those speed bumps or hurdles out of their way, now they can be their, them, their best selves and they can really start to perform. And when you do that, essentially, when I'm getting that junk out of their way, I'm removing some of their stress. And yes, I want to do that to help them grow professionally, but I'm also doing that so we can, can achieve success. We can achieve the goals that we set out to do. So as you bring people together and we're all sitting in a room and working collaborative, collaboratively and those kinds of things, we need to understand, all right, who are all the players? Who are all the various talents and strengths that, that we have that we can leverage? It's fantastic if we all have different talents, right? Again, Colby is all strengths based. So whether you're a one or a 10, it's not that one is better than the other. I just need to figure out, hey, Amy is a five in follow through. All right, how do I use that to my advantage? How do I let her unleash that talent? I'm a three in follow through. How does she let me unleash that talent? And so if you start to look and say, all right, the next time I'm gonna work with Anthony, who I'm showing on my screen here, how should I relay messages to him? How do I get his buy-in on things? And how is that different than someone like, let's say June? If we can all do that when we're working with each other, we can't help but collaborate more effectively. Also then as we're doing that, right, when we get together, we need to understand, you know, this is the strengths of each individual of the team. But then, you know, the, as we bring all of us together as a team, we're going to have an MO. And how do we get things done when projects are put in front of us, right? When those inevitable fires that pop up in business, what's going to go on? How are we going to tackle those? And so what we're looking at here is one of our team reports where we identify, okay, what's the MO of this team? The team we're looking at is an IT team. And so if you think about the IT systems inside of your business, right? You have the hardware, the software, how all of those things interconnect and talk to each other, how do you create a user experience internally and externally? You need to have someone who in their mind is architecting how all of those systems are going to work. And if this breaks, what happens? What kind of backup do we have? And if the backup breaks, where does it connect to and how all of those systems are connected? This IT team that we worked with recently they didn't have anybody that was doing that. So they had some people that could look at the systems that are in place and they were optimizing and making them work that much more effectively, that much better. They had a pretty large proportion of the team, 57%, where they could easily adapt and change things on the fly as needed, but they didn't have that overall architect that's laying out all of those steps. Well, if we know that, now we can go and grab some of those, that talent, pull them onto our team, to help us solve some of the complex problems that we're all faced in business. Hey, Eric, I'll add, when we were working with this team, and, and as Eric's pointing out too, if you see that 0% systematized in the blue column and the follow through, the number one complaint this team had from the outside was that they weren't on time, they weren't finishing things, they, um, and they were ha really, really struggling with project management. So I challenge all of you to think, ask yourself this one question, what's not getting done on our team? And there is probably a component that you will see when you take your team members together and look at the distribution of your strengths. It may be that you have too much of a certain kind of energy. And so it's really pulling you in a direction um, or it's you don't have enough. So we can help actually predict where you're, where you're going to struggle. And it absolutely was uh, relatable to this team when we showed this to them. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And they were, again, they were facing all of the challenges that all of us face throughout business life. And as we think of big challenges, think of the past, you know, 18, 19 months, every business has been faced with all kinds of change and all kinds of different challenges. And there was another team that we were working with. They were a dental team. And, you know, as you think of dentists, they pretty much kind of follow the same sort of script and they do things the same sort of way. Well, starting in March of last year, even dentists had to change the way that they operate. Even things as simple as, hey, we no longer allow people to hang out in our waiting room, right? And so they had to change their patient intake process. Well, if you have a team that naturally pushes back against change, and then you need to be able to understand that and figure out, all right, how do I adjust my message? How do I let them know, hey, here are the things that are going to stay the same, 
but also relate, hey, these are the things that have to change. And it's not because I need to change them. Literally, the world around us has changed. And so when we're working on this team, the only person that was coming up with some of those ideas and kind of pushing that change was the leader. If you've ever been the only one in the room, you know how sometimes lonely and isolating that can be. And it feels like everybody is pushing back against you. Again, it's predictable, but if you understand that, it takes some of that personal component out of it. They're not doing it on purpose. This is just them being them. And if you understand that, you can actually use that to your advantage later on. But you first have to identify what are the strengths on the team and then figure out how can we collaborate to leverage each other's talents. And I love this part of the reports, everyone, because we're just giving you one preview, as Eric's saying, of this is how this team handles risk and change and some of what's going on. This is what we would give you for your team. And not only does it predict where you will struggle, but it actually tells you the kind of activities where you really thrive as a team and then a bunch of tips for what to do about that. So the reality is you have this group of people. This is your team. It's amazing when you know what kinds of things will slow you down and where you'll struggle. These, the tips that we give you on these reports are very straightforward really easy to um, put into a, a play right away. And every team member can have access to these parts of the reports. Yeah, and anytime you bring people together, at some point you're going to have some challenges, right? It's the inevitability of bringing people together. And we know this. So what we'd like to understand from all of you out there is what are some of the biggest challenges that you're currently facing with your team? So I think Heather has, has popped the poll up, you know, answer is our biggest challenge communication or we're not hitting our goals. We're not effectively decision making. Maybe it's all of the above. Seeing the answers coming in, so communication is kind of leading the way. All of the above, it just took a, just took the lead. All right, it looks like responses are gonna starting to close down or slow down a little bit. So Heather, why don't you go ahead and share the results and then I'm gonna kick it over to Amy. And there we go. And so Amy, 43% said all of the above. So for the 43% of you, you're not alone, right? Yeah. It's not just your team, as you can see just from this simple poll from those of us on the webinar. Yeah, and that's, we, we've experienced that a lot too. So as I was saying, being able to predict where you're going to struggle and kind of having a common language and understanding each other better makes a huge difference. Um, what we've added to these new reports too is a focus on the leader. So there's a separate set of reports just with the leader. And we always say it starts with you. Uh, so I know we have a lot of leaders on the call today. And just like when you're on an airplane and they tell you, if we're in a crisis, put your mask on first. That is so true of a leader in an organization. And what we find is that teams struggle the most when the leader is not free to be him or herself. So when you have a leader that is working against their grain all the time and not able to work on the kinds of tasks and um, problem solving that works for them, that affects the rest of the team as well. And it's hard to be a leader. As we know, it's hard to delegate. You feel guilty when you give up some of that work. Um, you're doing the work of uh, more people than ever, there's a level of change and stress keeping up with right now that is tremendous. So we really focus on the part of the formula that Eric already showed you, which, which is about the instinct powered leadership. If we can get a leader who is really focused on building a team around them based on strengths, the effects can be a multiplier and they can be amazing. And of course, the leader can have an effect on the team as a multiplier that's not great either. So we are going to give that leader the tools and it just starts with this um, report called the leader optimization report that we have put together and it's going to do a few things number one it's going to identify the strengths of the leader themselves and we're going to tell them what's great and when they might run into stress we're going to highlight their role in collaboration so that you figure out when we all collaborate together how do i affect those team dynamics so we start with this fabulous report that I love that is one page summary of the types of tasks that all leaders have to do, which ones are most natural for you. So we're gonna take your four Colby numbers and we're gonna say, here are the kinds of things that you do when you're in the zone. 
And by the way, there is no one best demo for a leader. So just as a, a you know, just to let you know, in case you were thinking there was one best Colby result, that is not the case. So no matter what your four strengths are, we want to make sure to remind you, these are the kinds of things where you should spend most of your time. And then at the bottom of this one sheet, it's going to tell you the types of things that are going to cause you the most stress. So we're basically saying, hey, minimize the amount of time you're spending on these kinds of activities. We're also going to highlight where the leader fits in the distribution of the whole team. So you see a sample team here. Um, I believe this is our dental team again. And what you can kind of see is, as the highlighted name there, our lead dentist stands alone in some areas. And when we talk to a leader who's fairly different than the rest of their team, they really feel that. And so it's great to get a visual on this. And there's some coaching around this to say, hey, what contributions do you make to the team? In this case, we had a dentist who was a one through three and follow through, which means he brings adaptability to the team. He's got a lot of people that will follow structure or create structure, but when the plan isn't working, this is our guy. Like this is the one who's going to pivot and create something new that we need, both based on his follow through and his uh, seven through 10 and quick start. So we get them looking at how am I similar to my team? How am I different? And how do those dynamics play out when I am problem solving? So that's just a quick highlight of the leader reports. As we put in the chat, those of you that want to see a full sample of what's in the optimized section, it's really two different pieces of the report. One report is for everyone on your team, and that second report is for the leader. So we're just showing you bits and pieces. You're welcome to go and see those samples online. All right, let's talk about this align step, because this is the other part of the Colby system that is the most predictive of the turnover that you might be having in your company. So um, I'd said earlier, our goal is to make sure that you've got people on your team who love their jobs. People stick around when they get to work in the zone every day. And what's interesting about the Colby A, and it sounds like a lot of you have had experience already with the Colby A, the Colby A measures what you will do if free to be yourself. But guess what? We are not free to be ourselves a lot of the time. So what the A is, is just the starting point. That's giving you the potential of an employee on your team. What we are not seeing is the reality of how well are they aligned right now and are they getting to use that? So this align step is gonna give you a picture of that. And one of the things that I wanna share with you, kind of talked about myth busting a little bit with teamwork and the dream work, is that we're told quite a bit in any kind of management seminars or maybe even growing up and what you learn in school that it is all about time management and that you should be asking yourself on a daily basis, do I have time to do this? Or what, what should I be spending my time on? But I wanna challenge that and say, it is really about what do you have the mental energy to do? So if you can flip a little bit of what you're thinking about and how you're using this instinctive energy that we all have. So you wake up in the morning, you've got kind of this full tank of this mental energy available to use your striving instincts. The more that you work against what is natural to you, the more painful that becomes, the more that you get drained. So instead of asking, do I have time for this? I want you to flip that and say, is this the highest and best use of my mental energy right now? So for example, I have to read contracts um, from time to time in my role. It's really important that I get down to a detail level. I'm capable of doing that. I have the skills. It does not fit how I naturally take action. So if I spend my morning doing that, I might drain completely that mental energy that I might need for something else during the day. So I really have to ask myself, is this the best use? So you know all the time management gurus who will tell you do the hardest stuff in the morning. It's not necessarily going to work for you, depending on, on you know, how you're spending your time. So I want you to think about the stress that comes with working against your grain. We've all felt it. And what I want to challenge all of us is that the more you do that to the people in your teams, the more they are going to burn out, disengage, eventually turn over. And the worst part about all of this is your top players, your A players are just going to push through the stress, right? So I have a picture here of, um, you know, a pitcher on a baseball mound and the coach is coming out and saying, hey, how are you doing? Should I take you out? By the way, the answer is always no. 
they will say, I'm good every time um, in sports. Well, that's what your A players are going to do. If they're committed, they're going to keep pushing through, working against what's natural to them until it's too late. So it's important that we actually get an assessment of that. And I'm going to show you the tools that we use to do this. Um, and one other thing to think about as a leader, I love this quote by Marcus Buckingham, and that is that average leaders play checkers, great leaders play chess. And checkers, every piece is the same, right? They all have the same function, they're all the same. And I think that it is kind of human nature to, as, as a parent or a leader or whatever, to say, hey, this is what's worked for me, I'm sure it'll work for you, and treat everyone as if they were you. Well, that is our own bias. It's just kind of, as I said, human nature, but we need to challenge that. And what happens in chess is every piece has a different function and they have a different strength and really understanding your people at a different level allows you to make different decisions about where you should use them. So think about that from a leadership point of view is I'm gonna have to start tapping into a little bit more what makes each person unique. So we have this alignment report for leaders now it gives you a picture of um, the whole person as you're gonna look at their A, but you're also gonna look at what's going on with an individual role. So we have um, three or two different assessments that help you with the job profile. So Colby A, as I said, these are instinctive strengths, they're innate, they're just available to anyone. But looking at a Colby B is what gives you an idea of an individual's view of how they need to operate in their job. Currently, So if you're a leader, you're going to have someone in a given role, let's say that um, someone is working for you as an administrative assistant. So this is your assistant, you have them fill out a Colby B, it's a very short assessment, and they say, here's how I feel I need to take action right now in my job. Obviously, this can change over time, right? Comparing who they are, how they get things done most naturally, to how they view their job is going to give you a picture of a potential stress. But then adding to that, the Colby C is something that's completed by anyone in a position to evaluate the role. So certainly if this is your direct report, you're gonna complete it on the job itself and say, here's the kind of activities I need or the actions I need this person to take in order to be successful. It can also be completed by other people uh, in the organization. So if there is another uh, leader that should fill that out as well. Well, once you compare that, to the Colby B, you see how well aligned are you to each other? How much are you agreeing on what needs to be done? And we have a lot of different tools to help give the individual and the leader um, alignment reports with some great tips. So by the way, reality is we're all gonna work against what's natural for us some of the time. And so our reports give this person an assessment of that and how they can, um, a couple of little tips that they can put into play to help reduce stress. We also give the leader an alignment spreadsheet so that this is the best predictor for you of who might have the highest levels of stress so that you can do something before it becomes too late. So there's full alignment spreadsheet in there as well. All right, and then lastly, this last part of the Colby system is what we call expand. And as I had mentioned, this is how you drive growth in your business by hiring the people that are gonna fit, the people that you need to, um, contribute to your team in a certain way that also fit into the role. Remember those, those two different things. And I'm just gonna give you a highlight of one of the reports that we use, which is a candidate summary. So I'm gonna let Eric, if there are questions, go through the whole process of how we do hiring, but you're gonna create a profile on a, an ideal candidate. Then we're gonna rank all your candidates kind of like school, A through F letter grade. But we can also show you how does this person affect the dynamics of your team? So do they help the kind of diversity that we need on our team? Are you adding someone that has a lot of similar to what you already have? So we're able to not only look at how well does this person fit into the individual role? Are they gonna do the job the way you need it done? But also there's a team component that we can look at as well. Yeah, and so there's a, a couple of questions that have popped in, up, up, up had popped up, Amy. Right. So one of the questions was about, okay, what are all of the different indexes? So think of it this way. A is all about me, myself, how I naturally get things done. B is how do I view my job? So Julie, for you, your question was, can the, the Colby B help me identify as a leader how I see my role? 100%, yes. Then there's the Colby C. Colby C is 
How does my boss view my job? What are their expectations of me to get this role done? And as we look at building what we call, what we're looking at here is the candidate summary. The way we build that model for the job is it's a combination of things. Part one is the Colby C. How does the boss need this job to get done on a daily basis? But what we've also found is regardless of how skilled, talented, smart you are, you need to be able to work effectively with your boss. If you guys are constantly butting heads, it's gonna be really hard for you to be successful. So what we do is we basically blend together the Colby A and the Colby C, and that's what lets you know, hey, here's what your ideal candidate would look like for the position of X. And then we add, we can add the additional layer of, all right, how is this person now gonna interact with the five, six, seven other members of the team? That's excellent. Hopefully that answered that question. And we are certainly happy to answer more of that in line. And in fact, okay, great. Thank you, Julie, for giving us that feedback. Um, we're getting ready to uh, wrap up our time here and be able to go back to questions. But I would love for all of you to maybe chat in what have been your key takeaways so far. And so we've talked about collaboration that you actually have to think about how often and who's in the room. And there is a predictive nature to where a team will struggle. We've talked about leaders and some of what leaders need to do to certainly um, focus on their key strengths. We've talked about alignment so far. So we'd love for you to just put in what are some of your key takeaways? We also talked about time management versus energy management. And I know that these are just little nuggets of information um, within this 45 minutes to, to get to all, everything that we do in the entire Colby system obviously is a challenge, um, but we're giving you some of those overviews. So anything you can chat in would help us. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and have Eric give you some ideas on if you're ready to, to do more with Colby and you're all in different places here, we've put together some um, solutions for you that will help. All right, Eric. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, ahead of this, I know many of you filled out, okay, what would what question would you like to have answered? And thank you for that. And, you know, some of them were things like, how do I maximize my Colby result? Um, what are the top strategies for using Colby as a team? Um, you know, how to best use it with to, to build and engage an effective team? Yes, absolutely. And we know that, you know, there are lots of folks on this call, and I don't know that we can answer all of your questions today. But I know that there are lots of different ways that we can help. And so, you know, as we, 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 this is predictable, right? As we mentioned, we've seen lots and lots of teams worked with lots of them. And there are common challenges that pop up over and over again. And so what we've done is we've put together some of those key solutions for you that can help you with your team. So regardless of where you are in the process or what your needs are, identify, okay, what is the best next step for me? If all you've done is, I took my A as a leader. Well, then your next step is get A's for the rest of your team. If, you've, if you have A's for the rest of your team and you're like, all right, how do we optimize how we all work together? That's where this optimized bundle comes in. We're going to spend 90 minutes with you and your team on a webinar and we're going to help them all understand, okay, what the heck do your four numbers mean? Your specific numbers. If you're an eight in this or a three in that, what does that mean for you? Once we do that, then we're going to show you, all right, how do you use this in your job, right? How do you reduce some of that stress and start to be as productive as possible? Then we're going to help you communicate more effectively, right? How do I relay messages more effectively to Amy? How does she relay those messages to me? And then lastly, we're going to look and say, okay, as a team, that eight person unit, all right, what is your overall MO as a team? And what's the best way for all of you to work together? That's how you really begin to optimize team performance. For those of you that are really more focused on, all right, how do I help each individual? Um, how do I you know, maximize their productivity? Or even if you're like, hey, it's the end of the year and I have annual reviews coming up, that's where that role alignment bundle comes into play. Because now you get to understand, right, how do they see the job and how do I see the job? Are, first, are those two aligned? If not, then you as a leader need to step in and kind of relay the message of, no, here's really what I need you to do. And it also gives you some objective data that you can work on. And if there are some gaps, well, now that's how you begin goal setting for next year. Hey, we see this difference between you and your job, all right? What things can we do to help you achieve your goals? Again, it just makes those annual reviews much, much easier. 
if you've you know, lost some talented members of your team or if your business is continuing to grow, you need to bring more talent in. Here's what I can tell you and what you've probably already experienced. When you hire the wrong person, it is ridiculously painful, right? You have to spend all of that time training the person. You have to have those conversations of, look, I really mean it. You need to pick up your performance, right? You have to go through all of that. And that's draining on you as a leader, but it's also very costly. We've seen some data that at bare minimum for a frontline entry level kind of worker, it's going to cost your company probably at minimum $12,000. That's really expensive. So instead, make the investment up front and really identify what do I need? What does success look like in this job? So that then as you bring candidates in, you're setting them up for success. You're bringing the right people into your organization that will be highly productive members of your team that are going to last. So you don't need to fill that role again. And Eric, let me just mention, if those of you that are using Colby and hiring, it's a huge bonus when you're recruiting. I know how hard it is to um, have a competitive edge over everyone else that is hiring right now, but actually telling people, we care about you and your strengths and we wanna make sure and put you in a role that's where you're gonna thrive, it's a big deal. So you can use that as a part of your recruiting as well. And, you know, as I mentioned, right, we, we see kind of predictable patterns amongst teams, but I know you all have very different businesses and you work in different industries, different sizes of the teams and the businesses that you manage. And so we'd love to help you individually. And so if you go to the next one, you know, a great way to reach out, go to Colby.com slash teams. Obviously, there's some more information there on how to work with your team more effectively. You can download some of those sample reports. But if you want help on your specific situation, go down to the bottom of the page, fill that, uh, fill that form out, click the purple button. And at Colby, we specialize in helping different kinds of businesses. And so depending on what kind of business you manage, one of our, one of our account managers that specialize in that will reach out and they will absolutely help you. If you want to connect and you want to you know, tweet at us or things like that, absolutely run all of the you know, kind of the normal social challenge. If you're interested, and let's say you're a nine in fact finder, do you want to know how do other nines in fact finder, how do they do stuff? How do they manage their day? We have a fact finder forum or a quick start forum. All of those are inside of our Facebook groups. But if you want help on your specific business, go to colby.com slash teams, fill out that form, and we will absolutely get back to you. And, you know, obviously you can connect through social media channels and that kind of thing. But I know lots of you like to connect by learning more by really taking a deeper understanding of, right, how do I really use this in my business? You want to, you know, begin to kind of dip your toe in becoming an expert. We have a, a one-day workshop that's Colby Plus, and the next one is in February. It's virtual, and throughout that day, you're really going to understand your own specific results and how you can be, you begin to apply that throughout your entire business, whether it is managing teams throughout the hiring process, communication, those kinds of things. For those of you that really want to become the experts and you want to know all of the stuff that Amy and I know, then absolutely get certified. It's a three or four day process, kind of depending on if you're going to come in person to Phoenix. If you've never been to Phoenix in January, I can tell you it's amazing. It will probably be 70-ish degrees during the day without a cloud in the sky. So come in person. If you're more of a virtual kind of person, absolutely we have those options as well for those of you that really want to become experts in Colby. I'm going to pause for a second because I've seen the chat kind of going through. Are there any questions that I need to answer or that we need to answer? Looks like a couple have already been answered in the Q&A section, but everyone feel free to chat in your questions now. Or um, Suzanne, who's helping us also answer questions, um, feel free to let us know if we need to go more in depth with one of the questions that you're answering too. It sounds like people still have questions about filling out Colby B's and some of those as well. Yeah, we had some questions about understanding the A to F score. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the questions. And if you are a solopreneur, when does it make sense to do something past your Colby A? When does it make sense to do the B and C? So I'll, I'll tackle the A to F and then Amy, do you want to tackle sure. solopreneur? So yeah. when we're looking and we're assessing candidates to figure out, is this the right person for this role? Something I can tell you is Colby should never be the sole determining factor, right? As an example, if let's say you're, you're hiring a CFO for your business and 
you know a 16 year old that has the perfect Colby score to be your CFO, well, they probably don't have the business acumen, the experience, the skills, all of that to be your CFO. So there are lots of factors that go into it, but how you need the job done is an important component. So assuming you find the right people with the right experience and skills and all that, have them take the Colby A, you measure them against that model you built for CFO. We use the same grading scale that we, as far as grades that we got in school here in the States, right? An A, you're a really good fit. An F, we're never gonna tell you not to hire that person, but you're gonna have to drastically change your expectations of the role. Otherwise you're setting that person up for failure. And that's not fair to them and you know, kind of wasting their career time. And it's not fair to you as a business because you're gonna get reduced productivity and you're gonna be looking for a new CFO in three months, six months, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And then I think Suzanne, you said questions about being a solopreneur and doing the B. First of all, being a small business owner of any kind, solopreneur, or when you're just adding some staff is so challenging and absolutely do the B so that you can see what the B is gonna help you see is where you need to hire your next person or maybe outsource. So what's great is you may just need to think about how am I gonna either partner with someone that does some of the things that I don't do as naturally, or um, can I get a virtual assistant or can I get a part-time person or a vendor that's gonna do some of these things. Doing the B is very helpful with that. I will tell you that some people have to do more than one B. So if you fill two very different roles, let's say you're running a business and you have a couple of employees and you're a full-time kind of speaker or author or something like that, you might actually have to do one B for each of those roles because they look a little different, but we can help you make those decisions. I think it's super helpful and um, it is immediately gonna help you understand who's next. And by the way, all of those with solopreneurs, okay, so thanks, a solopreneur with virtual assistants, yeah. And please make sure the virtual assistants uh, that you get Colby indexes for them as well. Um, you know, so make sure that- question. So Julie, yeah. Julie's question is if someone took their A in transition, would it be okay to take a B? Oh, yes. absolutely, yeah. If you're in transition, so the B is just asking you, by the way, it's only 26 short questions. Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot faster to get through than the A. It's gonna say right now, how do I need to take action in this role? Um, absolutely, even if it's someone's in transition, they should be able to answer that. Yeah, and we'll help you too. If any of you have an employee or it's you in transition, um, figure out when to do a retake, but please revisit the transition result itself because it has five key questions and the audio is fabulous. Actually, Suzanne too, if you can um, plug something in as it relates to revisiting your A. So if you haven't been in your A in a while, um, you, you can go and put in your name, your four numbers and read through the full report, print it out again and listen to the audio because some of you have taken it long ago enough that we've added quite a bit there. Okay. Uh, let's and see. If you have any questions about what is transition, so when you look at a Colby result and you see a little star or asterisk underneath one or a couple of those little bars, that is someone who, who is in transition. It happens to all of us at some point in our life. Think of big transition points, right? I started my business. You were probably in transition at some point in that process. You took a new job. You had a new baby. You just got married. All of those are really big life-changing things. And so it makes sense that you would feel like you're kind of getting pulled in both directions in certain aspects of your life. Yeah, and that definitely happens when you're answering the 36 questions in the A and it's nearly impossible to say, what would you do if free to be yourself? Because as Eric just said, because you're doing so many things or being things to all people, it's, it's nearly impossible to answer without being contradictory in your responses. Okay, any other questions? And we'll stay on everybody um, for a little while longer with other questions. Yeah, but if those of you that need, you know, specific help with your team or with hiring, or whatever, go to colby.com slash teams, fill out that form and we will absolutely reach out to you and figure out what is the best solution for your specific situation. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Julie was asking about a sample of B results. Um, so maybe Suzanne, you can put something in there or Toby. Um, otherwise we can send you one directly too. We could, if you just want to give us your email, as Eric's saying, go ahead and fill out the form on, on Teams, on the Teams page that Suzanne just put up there. Okay. Oh, thank you, Toby. 
appreciate that. So there's your sample. Okay, everyone, looks like some of the questions are dwindling down. I just, while, while we're wrapping this up, I know some of you need to go and I wanna be respectful of your time. Eric and I just wanna thank you so much for your time today. Uh, as I said early on, we are on a mission and we are really passionate about solving some of the toughest people problems and making sure that we change people's lives by helping them be more of who they are and helping them actually get to use their instinctive strengths. And the best part of that is we also know it makes a huge difference in your business and the success of a team and the business itself. So thank you so much for spending time with you today. And we look forward to continuing to work with you in the future as well. All right. Thank you.